So let's look at the derivation of uh, the dual of the hard margin classifier. The primary problem is to minimize with respect to W and B half W transpose W subject to the constraint YI times W transpose XI plus B minus 1 should be greater than or equal to 0. The Lagrangian is constructed directly from uh, this. The objective function appears in the Lagrangian and then uh, with a negative sign because we have a greater than or equal to zero here, so a negative sign. And uh, lambda i is the Lagrange multiplier um, times uh, these constraints. Uh, yi, w transpose xi plus b minus one times the Lagrangian, and we take the summation over all points i equals one through n. The Lagrange multiplier, lambda i, should be greater than or equal to zero. Let's take the derivatives to construct the stationary conditions. So the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to B is, so we have lambda i, y i multiplied by B here, uh, and uh, that's inside the summation sign. So the derivative with respect to B will be negative of lambda i, y i, which is equal to zero, which implies that summation lambda i y i is equal to zero. Then let's take the derivative with respect to w. So the first term half w transpose w, the derivative is simply w. And for this term, we have uh, w transpose getting multiplied with lambda i y i x i. So lambda i y i x i and w transpose is being multiplied with that. So when we take the derivative, we are left with lambda i y i x i. So uh, we get w minus summation lambda i y i x i equals zero, whence w equals summation lambda i y i x i. And one interesting observation is that the weights w are being expressed as a linear combination of the inputs. And um, they are multiplied by Lagrange multipliers and uh, yi's. OK, now from the previous slide, we saw that w was equal to summation lambda i y i x i, which I can write in this form. And you can see that uh, uh, this gives rise to this summation because y1 x1 lambda 1 plus y2 x2 lambda 2 and so on until yn xn lambda n is what this is which is equal to this. This I rewrite in this form. All the lambdas I take together and form a vector lambda. So hence I get w equals this row vector times this column vector. This actually is not a row vector. It's a matrix because each xi is a column vector. And also, we remember that summation lambda i y i equals 0. These two expressions are important for the derivation. So now let's look at how to do the derivation. We have to take the Lagrangian and we have to take the infinimum with respect to w b. And that gives the dual. Instead of that, Instead of explicitly minimizing with respect to W and B, we can simply eliminate W and B. So, and the next step that we will do is we'll maximize theta D with respect to the dual lambda. And then, uh, we, assuming that strong duality holds, uh, this dual formulation uh, will help us retrieve the primal variables W and B directly. So let's eliminate W, the first step. This is the Lagrangian, and I've written the two terms uh, separate from each other for clarity. So that's the first term plus second term. That's our Lagrangian, where the first term is half W transpose W, and the second term is negative 
summation lambda i y i times w transpose x i plus b minus 1. And we've already seen that w was equal to this expression here. So the first term is half w transpose w. This is the first term of the Lagrangian, which is equal to if this is w, then w transpose, I take the transpose of this, so that's lambda transpose times this transpose, which gives this. So this is lambda transpose, and this is the other term. So y1, x1 transpose, until yn, xn transpose, and they are um, the different rows of this uh, vector, which is actually a matrix. Anyways. And so the W is this. So this is equal to, if I take these, oops, this part, and I, this is a matrix, and I call it H. So this is my H. Then the first term is simply half lambda transpose H lambda. And note this is the expression for H, whence Hij is YIYj times Xi transpose Xj. The second term is equal to this, uh, negative summation lambda I, Yi, W transpose Xi plus B minus 1, which is equal to, I remove the first set of parentheses, and so this becomes lambda i. And then I separate out the two terms. So I have a first term, which is lambda i, y i, w transpose x i plus b. And the second term is, uh, my, this is a negative here. Uh, actually, this is a plus here. So um, plus summation lambda i. And then I separate out the W transpose Xi and B, whence I get three terms now, one, two, and three. And noting that summation lambda I, Y, I was equal to zero, I'm left with this. So this is what I have so far for the second term. And now I can you in the next slide. So this is the second term from the previous slide. And now, W transpose, I replace with this expression here. And I have the Xi here. And this, of course, is the second term, uh, summation lambda I. And this is equal to negative lambda transpose I have taken everything that doesn't contain the index i outside and placed it here. And what's inside the summation is summation lambda i, y i, x i. So this. And I simply copy the second term. Proceeding on to the next slide. So this is what I have so far. And now this, as we saw, can be replaced with this expression. And therefore, we have this as our second term. I have taken all the lambdas and formed a vector here. And we already saw that this was this matrix H. Whence, the second term is simply negative lambda transpose H lambda plus summation lambda I can be rewritten as lambda transpose 1. Therefore, the first term and the second term are like this. The second term is this, we just saw, and the first term was half lambda transpose lambda. So this is the first term. And these two are the second term, whence 
uh, if you see, the first term is half of the second term with um, uh, ignoring the negative signs, so they cancel out. So I'm left with this as the Lagrangian. So L W B lambda is negative half lambda transpose H lambda plus lambda transpose one. And this does not contain any W or B, which I have eliminated. So remember that this is the matrix H. And each term Hij is Yi, Yj, Xi transpose Xj. This is the inner product X of uh, Xi and Xj. So this is the dual. We maximize now with respect to dual of this function, negative half lambda transpose h lambda plus lambda transpose 1, subject to lambda transpose y equals 0 and lambda is greater than or equal to 0. And we need to remember what the matrix H is. The matrix H is constructed purely out of the inputs, sample inputs. And this constraint lambda transpose y equals 0 is the vectorized version of uh, what we saw earlier, summation lambda i y i equals 0. And now coming back to the uh, schematic, uh, uh, the two points circled are the support vectors and it is for these support vectors that the constraints are active and for which lambda i will be non-zero. For all the other points, all the plus points on this side and on the minus points on this side, the Lagrange multiplier lambda i will be equal to zero because the constraints will be inactive. So we only need to consider this x plus here, which is sitting exactly on the margin and this x minus here, which is also sitting on the margin on the opposite side of the hyperplane. So these two will constitute the support vectors. And w can be expressed as this summation, if s is the set of support vectors, in general, uh, when we do nonlinear SVMs, uh, you'll have more than two support vectors. So we need a whole set of support vectors for which the lambdas are greater than zero. And so W will be expressed as a summation of lambda S Y S times X S. This is S. And the B will be negative W transpose X S plus W S for any, take any support vector S and that will give you the bias B. In practice, we compute bias separately for every support vector, uh, every support vector index S, and uh, then take the average. The support vector set, uppercase S, is equal to this, the set of indexes for which lambda i is greater than zero. So our classification rule is simply this. If W transpose X plus B is uh, greater than zero when x is some new input, then x belongs to positive, it's a, the label y is positive, uh, plus one. Otherwise, if w transpose x plus b is less than zero, then x uh, is a negative sample. Now, instead of explicitly writing down w transpose x, we can write it down in this manner uh, since W was uh, expressed in terms of uh, the lambdas, the y's, and the x's of the support vectors, we can alternately express uh, our classification rule in this manner. So if summation uh, over all support vectors, lambda s, y s, x s transpose, x s plus b is greater than zero, then x uh, belongs to the positive category. Otherwise, if summation s, lambda s, y s, x s transpose x s plus b is negative, then x belongs to the negative category. The end.